but I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Uh, I only know about this through the Screen Junkies dealings I've had with Mr. Mark Ellis, so I am completely a babe in the woods here. Schmodown fans, this is William Bibiani. You will know me as the Beast. I will destroy uh, your expectations uh, about who I am, but you will know me from all the winning, winning. I will win. I will win. I've been working in the comic book industry for over 20 years. I've seen every permutation of Mr. Viviani, and most of them have come up and asked for my autograph and then said they don't like my work, so this is a cakewalk. The beast is here. I am here to destroy. I'm going to get a lot of questions right because I have been watching this show for a very long time, and I get all the questions right. Well, most of the questions right. Most of the questions. I get almost all the questions right. Well, you know, Movie Fight started because of Hal Rudnick, who does Screen Junkies over there. I do a show with him that we've been doing for nine years called uh, the Tournament of Nerds at Upright Citizens Brigade, the third Saturday of every month at midnight. $5 tickets. It's awesome. So uh, I like these sort of competitions. I, I was never an athletic sports kid, but when I play board games or celebrity or Trivial Pursuit, I get crazy serious and competitive. So uh, most people don't want to play games with me. You can't spell the beast without the best! And let's just cut down the brass tacks. I am ridiculously good at movie trivia. You can forget about your John Rocas. You can forget about your Dan Merles. You can forget about... Uh, I don't even remember who else played. So I hear Bibiani calls himself the Beast. I guess then, obviously, that makes me the beauty. So uh, the beauty's going to triumph over the ugly today. I am coming for you. I am coming for Mark Andrago. I am going to take the android from Westworld to second best world. Trivia Schmodown. I'm Christian Harlow. I am Mark Ellis, and Christian, what a matchup we have today. A lover of cinema versus a guy who's a fan of film. Listen, this is going to be very, very interesting here, Mark, because these are both guys that are making their debuts in the movie Trivia Schmodown, but they have also, they know a lot. Now, you got Mark the Android and Draco, who is a regular on Screen Junkies Movie Fights. Fans know him well from being on Movie Fights. Now he's coming over here because the guy likes to be competitive. He wants to test his hat in this ring. Now you got the beast, Bibiani, who since this thing started, flooding my email inbox saying, I should be the guy. I'm the champion. I'm, I can be able to do this. Get me in there, coach. I want to play. And now he gets his chance. King Seminole at CompuServe.com is that email address. And Christian, I'll tell you this about Mark Andreco. Yeah. You know how competitive the guy is from his time on movie fights. I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in that arena. I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with William Bibiani in movie theaters across the country, yelling and screaming about our take on movies. These guys are passionate competitors. Look, I'm telling you this. This, and this is a bold prediction here, but I think that you're looking at a potential champion in either one of these guys. Absolutely. So if the question is who is going to come out on top, it's going to be a good match. We could have a points record by the end of this matchup. Ooh, well, we'll see. All right, well, let's get to the tail of the tape. There you have, very similar as you see, Mark Andreco, horror movies, Oscar movies, William Bibiani, horror movies, Oscar movies, and then a question mark for Andreco, and then step up movies for Bibiani. He is a big fan of cheerleading. I believe that is in his history at some point, Christian. Will he switch careers successfully to movie trivia king? I'm ready to go. Are you? I cannot wait to hear that golden throat of yours pipe up again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first, representing Screen Junkies. Making his debut in the movie trivia showdown. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, shy. give it up for Mark, the Android <laughs> and Draco. Not a lot of fanfare, not a lot no. of thrills. He is a robot of movie knowledge, Christian. Very simple, coming out to the Danny Elfman Beetlejuice song, sitting down, relaxing, just ready to go. A big fan of Oingo Boingo is Mark Andreco. And his opponent. Representing Parts Unknown, making his Schmodown debut. Zero wins, zero defeats, ladies and gentlemen. He is William the Beast, Bibiani. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. A freak. Wow, that is a way. 
Bryant. He's, he's escaped from his chains, oh, holding uh, him back. Unbelievable. What an entrance by Viviani. <laughs> Literally. Oh, wow. Viviani is coming an up. An animal. Man. Can he focus his emotions and get answers into the microphone correctly? Breaking the chains and walking out. Oh, and he's shaking the hand. The beast is a polite beast. Literally it's thousands of dollars of equipment was at risk here in the studio moments ago. We somehow survived. Wow. Even giving the outlaw a bit of... Uh, oh, yourself a bit on run of theatrics there in the entrance from the beast. Uh, but look at him now. He's composed. He looks like he's yachting. Yeah, he's, he's gonna, and he's going to chew off someone's nose. A convict All right. on a yacht. Here we go. So here is how it works. Round one. The competitors will have six predetermined categories, six questions worth one point apiece. You cannot steal from your opponent. William Bibiani, you are the favorite in this match. I Would am? You, yes, you are. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. You're going to go first. Mark Andreco, category one or category two? For him? For you. You For get me? to pick. Yeah. Um, category two. All right. So I am number one. You're William Bibiani from one. one Bibiani one. early in the lead as far as having watched this show before. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> William Bibiani, here you go in the category of 80s movies. Molly Ringwald plays Annie, an outcast at her Chicago high school in which film? Uh, Pretty in Pink? That is correct. Yeah. One point for the audience. I thought these would be hard, to Christian. clap if you like. Um, I think they're afraid to clap. Yeah, I would be afraid, too. I'll, I'll be at a very well-spoken beast, a lot like the X-Men character. In the category of animated, who lent his voice as John Smith in the Disney film Pocahontas? Mel Gibson. That is correct. Two for two for the beast. In the category of action adventure, Hugh Jackman plays hacker Stanley Jobson in which film? Swordfish. Three for three for the Beast. Three for three for Bibiani. And now Andrako takes his step up to the plate in the Schmodown for the very first time. Can I be Donald Trump and just be wrong? <laughs> wrong. You're Even though I'm obviously right? Yeah, that'd be great. You're a nasty orange person. <laughs> that makes me Donald Trump. Well, well it's an all-out Trump war. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Your first question in the realm of 1980s movies. Who played the gorgeous lady of the evening, Lana, in the film Risky Business? Rebecca De Mornay. One, One point, point for the android. For Mark Andreco. And now we move to the world of animated movies. The Princess and the Frog takes place in which American city? New Orleans. Wow. He even put a little bit of Cajun like accent like in that. there. The android has a little bit of flair to him as well. <laughs> now we move into action adventure. Who played the accused criminal Mark Sheridan? On the run from Sam Gerard in the film U.S. Marshals. Wesley Snipes. Wow. Three for three. This is a bad We might have a new points leader on our hand here, Christian. Moving over to the category of famous directors. William Bibiani, who directed the three Rush Hour films? It's not that famous. It's Brett Ratner. All right. There you go. <laughs> and directed might All be right. overstating things. Yeah. The category that. of comedies in Kicking and Screaming, what sport was Will Ferrell coaching? Uh, would be soccer, kids soccer. That is correct. And for your perfect first round in the category of Oscar movies. No pressure. Sean Connery has won one Oscar, a best supporting statue for which film? <sighs> the Untouchables. Seemingly six bored by this six. match. Wow. That, what a debut. That might have been the first time anyone's hit six in their debut. What a fireballer he is. And now Andreco could match him with a perfect round one. Mark. Your question comes from the category of famous directors. Sidney Pollack directed Tom Cruise in which 1993 thriller? The Firm. Give him a point. Wow, look at this. Give what him a, a point. What a battle. Hey, you remember when we used to be good at movie trivia? Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> in the world of comedies, Method Man and Red Man end up at Harvard in which 2001 comedy? How High? How High Are look We? At this. And for an unprecedented. 12 points by both competitors. His final question in round one. Oscar movies. Don't joke. Who was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for her work in 1989's Steel Magnolias? Julia Roberts. Give the man it a is point. A 12 it is point a 12-point round. Drink your juice, Shelby. Drink your and juice. I guess we'll keep playing, although it seems like these guys are just not going to miss. That has never happened before. A perfect game on both competitors. Going into round two now. Here is how it is going worse to from work. Here. Emma Fife will bring out the Wheel of Destiny. All there right. it is. Emma Fife. Emma Fife will bring the wheel out, and the competitors will spin the wheel. If it lands on a category they do not like, they can spin again. Unless, of course, it lands on opponent's choice, which they have to take. 
Each question will be worth two points apiece, unless, of course, you opt to multiple choice. Then it'll be one point. You can steal from your opponent in this round. Bibiani, you are the favorite still. And so it is Who's six. Who's deciding to, that? I, yeah, uh, I don't know either, but I'll take it. We're based off movie games. That's what okay. it is. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All so right. here Ready? we go. Uh, well, if you like, you don't have to go first. You don't I'll have, go first. You want to spin first. All right. All give right. it a spin. Wheel Jeez. of morality. Turn, turn, turn. Right, here Tell we go. us the lesson we should learn. And it landed on? Comic book. Comic book movies? Uh, yeah, I'll take it. All right. Comic so, book movies. He's just going to take comic book take movies. All right. All right. Here we go. Mr. Bibiani, Beast, your first question. In the world of comic book movies, what hero said, I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. Oh. Reminder to our first timers, you cannot for multiple choice. Five. Multiple four. choice. Your options are, is it A, Bruce Banner, B, Steve Rogers, C, Tony Stark, or D, Peter Parker? Steve Rogers. One point wow, okay. for Bibiani. There you go. Your next question. Who played Harry Osborn in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy? Harry Osborn, the younger, was James Franco. Two points for the beast. In 2013's Man of Steel, Clark Kent's adopted hometown of Smallville is in which state? Still in Kansas, right? It is in Kansas. Okay. <laughs> they didn't move it. And we're not in All Kansas right. anymore. Your last question in round two. In Thor The Dark World, oh God. <laughs> Eric Selvig streaks naked at what landmark? Oh, it's Stonehenge. Two more wow. points <laughs> for Viviani. He is a beast, Christian. Yeah. He is a beast. He and is. now we see if Andreco has any sort of answer. All right, here we go. Mark, you're up. Give it a spin. Is there nice. music? The no. And it landed oh, on. that is... 80s. That is 80s. 80s. Did you take it? I hey, will take it. All right, Mark, in the category of 80s movies, who directed the film Parenthood? Oh, come on. Ron Howard. All right. Two points for Andrego. You got Kansas for Smallville. Yeah. Come on. I would have guessed Mississippi. Why, what, would, why would you do that? What is the line that helps Sarah defeat the Goblin King in Labyrinth? Oh, I'm not good at Labyrinth. Uh, I'll do multiple choice. Is it A, I am the master of my fate, B, you have no power over me, C, I am the queen of destiny, D, you live only in my imagination? Hmm, can I phone a friend? Can, uh, I? can you repeat it one more time? Sure. A, I am the master of my fate, B, you have no power over me, C, I am the queen of destiny, D, you, you live only in my imagination. I'm going to go... I'm not real certain about this. Uh, Five. I am the queen of my own fate. That is incorrect. You have no power over that me. That is correct. Baby, Annie, that's a big steal for two guys who are getting a lot of questions right. Question number three. Who played the conniving boss, Catherine Parker, in the 1988 hit Working Girl? Sigourney Weaver. That is correct. Oh, a big two points there. Andrego on the comeback tour. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Your final question in round two. What is the name of the slimy news reporter in Die Hard? Oh, I'm, oh um, I definitely need the uh, multiple choice for this one. Is it A, Evan Baxter, B, Richard Thornburg, C, Lewis Witt, D, Peter Thorndike? Richard Thornburg? That is correct. Yeah. All right, there you go. What a round. So look at this. At the end of round two, it is 14 to 11. The Beast has a three-point lead. And a chance to get the all-time points record, but man, does he have a mountain of a task ahead of him. These round three <coughs> questions do not get any easier. Here's how it works. Round three, gentlemen, you're going to pick three numbers from 1 to 24. And you will have a one-pointer, a three-pointer, and a five-pointer. William, you are, you are in the lead. Please pick three numbers. One, three, and five. One, three, and five. Going early, going odds. I and like staying the in order. Staying in order also. Mark, you're up. 22, 23, 24. The opposite <laughs> end of the <laughs> spectrum. Right. There you go. Polar opposite. This Mark means Andrico. everything. Here we go. So Mark Andreco is up. He just needs three points to stay in the game. If he does not get those points, then Bibiani will win via TKO. All right. For category 22, you picked Fantasy. 
In the category of fantasy sci-fi, Morgan Freeman fights an alien force in this film based on a Stephen King story. Dreamcatcher. That is correct. One point and a, and a hearty chuckle from his opponent to be. That's beast. right. All right, in order to stay in the game here and to throw it back over to Bibiani, in the category of DC movies, how was the police commissioner assassinated in the Dark Knight? Poison drink. That is correct. Not only answering it correctly, acting it out as well. All right, here we go. So now it goes to William Bibiani. The beast is up, Christian, and his one point category is, you chose the number one. Said category is scores and soundtracks. <sighs> Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head was written for what classic film? Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Tie game. Give the Burt man a Bacharach. point. Burt Bacharach. Best Bibiani part of that movie. has not missed a question. Yeah. No, he is not. <laughs> now, stay, staying with William Bibiani with his second, his, his three-pointer. Your three-pointer. In the category of comedy, mm. in which comedy action franchise will you find Detective Billy Rosewood and Sergeant John Taggart. Comedy action franchise. Five, four, three, two. Beverly Hills Cop? Wow. He pulled one out of wow. his tuchus. Oh. So now, he goes back up by three, and it is do or die time for Mark Andreco. He has a five-point question left. If he gets this right, it's going to be all on William Bibiani to get his five-pointer right. That's right, and a chance to break the score record, but we'll see if he gets, gets that chance. All right, Mark Andreco, you're 20, you picked category 24, and here is your question in the category of crime. Russell Crowe stars as a quick-tempered, brutal cop Wendell Bud White in which film? L.A. Confidential. And there you go. 20. It is now 20 Westerns. to 18. For him. William Westerns. Bibiani now can not only win the game with his five-pointer, he can break the singles record by doing it and also being the only competitor to get every question right and win. Your category for your five-point question. You chose the number five, and that corresponds to Disney films. Name the Disney film in which Honest John leads the title character astray to the sinful pleasure island. Pinocchio! And your winner! Pitching a perfect game and breaking the singles record, William the Beast Bibiani! I got no strings on me! Yeah! That is something that is incredible because this also, when John Roca beat the, the singles record, he did it against me by scoring the 21 points and I had 19. And Draco just also broke, he has 20 points in that. That is not the last time. And Draco is also a beast. That is the most points we've ever had for a loser on the show, Christian. And speaking of points, <laughs> we also have 23 for the record holder and your new winner in the Schmodown, William the Beast Bibiani. We're looking forward to a lot from both of these guys. But for right now, let's get an interview with both the winner and the loser standing by with Emma Fife. Hey, what's up, Schmodown fans? I'm Emma Fife, and I am here with William the Beast Bibiani. Man, not only did you say you were going to deliver, you didn't get any questions wrong. Well, yeah, because I'm good at this. <laughs> I mean, I almost felt like some of the questions they threw at you, you seemed a little offended by how easy they were. I was genuinely offended by how easy these <laughs> questions were. I keep watching the show thinking, come on, throw out a challenge. And the only reason I almost didn't know the Beverly Hills Cop question is because I don't really know the Beverly Hills Cop movies. So I just assumed it was either that or Stakeout, and it's probably not Stakeout, because who the heck cares about Stakeout? I was going to say, not only do I think this is a record score, it was also sort of record time because you didn't hesitate on anything except Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, yeah. Much like uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone hesitated on Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, and then Eddie Murphy just swept in and Stallone had to do Cobra. Uh, the, yeah, this, this, that, was my, that was almost my kryptonite, except it wasn't. It was my red kryptonite? <laughs> Which one's the good one? I don't know. 
Now, the only other question that you had a little bit of hesitation on and you lost a point on was the Steve Rogers question. Can you tell us about your thought process there? Well, the the category was comic book movies, so it really could have been anything. Could have been DC, could have been Marvel, could have been before the modern era. And I, I just got this sort of flood of every superhero who could theoretically have said that. Superman could have said that, maybe in one of the animated movies. Uh, and uh, once they said Steve Rogers, I'm like, oh, right, because the World War II, he didn't want to go out and kill Nazis. He just wanted to fight bullies because that's that's his shtick. Sure. So yeah, that was the one thing where I just I didn't want to get it wrong because I knew and Draco was bringing it. But I think you really got yourself the lead with that labyrinth question when you stole it from Andrago. Who the hell doesn't know labyrinth? Labyrinth is the shiznit. Labyrinth <laughs> is the best. <laughs> I have to agree with you on that one. I certainly. Oh, Roka, Beast. I gotta give you props, man. What a debut. You took my record. Pretty amazing. I haven't seen something like this since a young version of The Outlaw. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty proud of you, man. And I want to ask you a question. It goes for all the Schmodown people out there as well. We talked about something before. We talked about The Outlaw. We talked about Nost. We talked about this. I, was, I want to ask you to be number three on our team and we'll get a fourth. We're talking about the Four Horsemen movie trivia. Are you in or are you out, Beast? I have no idea what you're talking about, but yes. Yes? Yeah, sure, yes. why not? Just right. say yes. <laughs> We're coming for everybody else. Growl, growl. Growl, growl. Awesome. So you heard it, guys. we got the four horsemen of movie trivia in the works. Beast, congratulations once again on your win. Growl, growl. <laughs> All right, Mark Andreco, I feel like under any other circumstances, you could have easily been a winner here. 20 points, that's the third highest record we've ever had on the show. Oh, well, that's impressive to know. Uh, yeah, that damn Labyrinth question. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Not a David Bowie fan? No, I, all I remember about Labyrinth is that David Bowie didn't wear an athletic supporter. It's distracting. Yeah. It is kind of legendary that way. So you were up, obviously, against a very difficult opponent, but you made a very good showing. Was there anything that you felt like you were getting tripped up on besides Labyrinth? Um, well, there was a, there were some, sometimes the wording can be interpreted in different ways in some of these movies. So, uh, yeah, but no, the, the questions were all, you know, all pretty straightforward. Like I said, I, if it was a dark crystal category, that I would know. That's, that's the Henson movie of the 80s that I really love. Labyrinth, I know a couple of the songs, but... Yeah. You're more into like all puppets than puppets and David Bowie. The, sure, I'll put that. <laughs> I'll put that on my dating profile. <laughs> all puppets, all the time. Awesome. Now, obviously, as I say, you had a really good showing today. So, what's what's next for you? Are you gonna come back? Are you done? If they'll have me back, sure, absolutely. This is always this was a blast. This was super fun. I was glad I came into it completely woefully unprepared because I didn't know what to expect. But no, everybody here's great, so I would love to come back and compete again. You did say at the top of the show that you'd never seen an episode of the uh, show before. I had not. I was uh, gonna watch some last night in preparation, but then I realized I would stay up all night watching them. So I'm like, feast or famine, I'm going with famine. And you think that famine was the right choice? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could have psyched myself out. So. Awesome. Well, Mark, great, great job today, and uh, certainly we hope to see you here again. Thanks so much. Back to you, Christian and Mark. All right, Mark, so there you go. Listen, Bibiani said that he was going to be a beast in this league, and what a debut. By coming in, did not knock out Andrego, because you're not knocking out Andrego, mm -hmm. but he did break the singles record. Only had to go to multiple choice once and still got that one right. He huffed, he puffed, and he blew this little house down. But for Mark Andreco and for his credit, that guy really came to play, and he's he going to be a factor going forward as well. We have two new beasts, yeah. even though one goes by that moniker. Oh, and Draco's going to be around for a bit. We're going to definitely see him in the top tier of this league for sure. But Bibiani right now, I mean, look, this is the almost the end of the season right now. What a debut. I'm telling you, by next season, you put him up against yourself, a Sam Levine, a Jeff Snyder, a John Roca, and those are some electric matches. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great, and you guys can stay right here to Collider Video. Subscribe, and don't miss another Schmodown match ever again. That is Christian Harloff. I am Mark Ellis, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.